Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. We're taking a look at another tool that I use pretty much daily. Uh, this is a tool that I use instead of getting into Microsoft Office and PowerPoint. Uh, I started using this a number of years ago uh, as I was starting up my doctoral work. Uh, I'd had the challenge of working on PowerPoints and you know sharing a PowerPoint document with colleagues or friends to get ready for a talk you're sending this PowerPoint file back and forth and back and forth you lose track of what revision you're on you also lose track of different images and videos and hyperlinks and on what computer all of those stored um, the other reason I switched over to using this tool is that um, you know let's say you have a, a laptop or a computer that you're working on your PowerPoint and then you go to a different location or your computer possibly crashes which has happened numerous times uh, right before that big presentation you're worried about that PowerPoint you know file that's lost you know over on that other machine and then also I, I use this tool because I want to be able to share out PowerPoints and presentation materials with students or to get ready for an upcoming talk or if I give a keynote I'll send the PowerPoint out and I want to send the presentation materials out to people so they can follow along. So this could be a in real life, a face to face discussion or a presentation, or this could be something that's online or hybrid. So I can present, you know, using Skype or video conferencing tools and send my presentation materials and my slide deck out so people can review it while I'm talking. Um, so the, the one tool that does all of this for me is Google Slides. Google Slides has been called a number, uh, number of things over the years. Uh, it was called Google Presenter, I believe, and Google Presentation. Uh, now I think they're sticking with Google Slides at least for a little bit. Uh, this is one of the challenges, as always, with Google Docs, uh, with Google applications, is that they often change the names um, and the titles of their different products. Google Slides, if you go in and search for it, I can click on this link and I can you know be brought to a nice fancy page which will tell me about Google Slides I don't really use that at all you can also see that Google Slides is available on Android phones and tablets it's available on your iPhone and your iPad so you can create those documents you can create the slide decks on those uh, tools typically what I'll do is I create Google Slides on my PC or my Mac um, or my Chromebook and then if need be I have found myself on occasion I'll review or edit a slide deck on a tablet or a phone many times if I'm you know sitting waiting to stand up and give my keynote or I'm getting ready to, to stand up and talk or getting ready for class and I know I want to make a quick edit and I don't have the chance to quickly get to a laptop to make those changes I can go into the app on Android or iTunes uh, on iOS and I can edit this slide deck right there and it's automatically updated so that's one of the other pieces about this that I love is that if I take my slide deck and I make a change or I modify the slide deck then the slide deck is modified everywhere that's unbelievable for me um, you know I don't have to go find old versions of my PowerPoint deck delete them and re-upload a slide deck I can just have a hyperlink to my most up-to-date slide deck so for me that's uh, a game changer there are other versions of uh, PowerPoint that are out there there is a 365 version of PowerPoint that allows you to get in and edit um, I still even with all of the changes and and the additions that they make I stick with Google Slides I really like the overall tool I think that they've been putting a lot of uh, you know development into it and improving the tool all the time so let's just stop talking about it and start taking a look at so if I go to drive Actually, I'm going to switch over to my personal account. I'm in my institutional account right now. So I, I usually do not go search for Google Slides and, and go into this main link. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go to drive.google.com, and that will list all of your Google Drive materials. So if you upload content, and I'll talk about that in a future video, if you use Google Docs, which I've talked about in videos, any other Google app you use for the most part is going to store itself in your Google Drive and you can access it you can modify it you can get to it at any point through Google Drive so if I go in I'm in Google Drive now I'll have a future video on how to 
organize and modify your Google Drive. But I'm just going to go up to New. And I'm going to slide my way down to Google Slides. And it's going to start up a new Google Slide Deck for me. So this is organized pretty much the same way that you've seen Google Power, I mean, uh, PowerPoint through the years. Um, there's a lot of similarity between this and the organization or the outlines or the, the interface with like Microsoft Office and Word and all of those tools. So what you'll see is like an overall, you'll have a, a listing of, you know, the, the title is up here. You'll have the slide over here. You have lined up over here the uh, slides in your slide deck. So as I get started, what I'll typically do is I'll give it a new title so that I can stay organized and make sure I get back to my materials at a later date. You can see that it's still trying to update. Apparently, my internet connection is having a tough time. So I'll call it Test Slide Deck. So there's also themes that you can add in. So just the same way that we would expect this in PowerPoint or some of the other fancier uh, presentation softwares that are out there, you have the opportunity to change the theme. They have some uh, newer ones now that I'm looking that I haven't seen in the past. What I've also noticed is that if you search online for Google Slide templates, there's a lot of really great templates that are out there that people take the time, they develop, they look great, and you can use them. So one of the, the slide decks that I use a lot is this one here called Spearmint. So if you click on it, it's going to add the, the template or the theme over. I can get rid of this once I know that I want it. Uh, I can go in and click and, and edit this right away. So I can change and modify this if I want to. I can add in speaker notes. I don't really use speaker notes for my presentations, so I don't use that, but I know that there's a lot of people that uh, use those uh, quite often. If I want to go in, I can add in new slides by clicking here. I can add this little drop-down carrot, and I can change it to title and body, title only, title in two columns, one column section title description, big number, a blank slide, a main point, like a section header. <coughs> Excuse me. I can add just a caption. I'll typically do just the caption or a blank slide if I add a YouTube video to this. So I can add in slides. Once again, I can, if I look through up here, I have my file options. So I can download this as a PowerPoint deck if I ultimately needed to or wanted to. I can publish this to the web. So I can send a link out to people that will automatically advance, uh, a, you know, based upon a certain amount of time. I can embed this. So what I'll often do is I'll embed this PowerPoint deck in my WordPress site or in a uh, wiki site. So I can change the size of this and I can publish it. And then the nice thing is here is a nice embed code that I have to copy paste over to a website or a wiki or wherever else this uh, slide deck might live. Now once I have that embedded, that embed code works and it automatically updates depending on what I change here. So usually I'll get in, I'll pick a theme, I'll start building up my slide deck. Once I have the slide deck built, I'll go in and publish it to the web and embed it wherever this thing is going to go. I can edit, which is this, the typical undo, redo, copy, paste. I can view this, so I can go in and I can look at the, pre the presenting mode. So if I go into presenting mode, I can change uh, the way this all looks and the notes that occur. I don't know if that messed up my video, but we'll just carry on. So the presenting mode will show you the speaker notes that you have uh, along with your slide deck. I can go in and I can insert a lot of different content so i can insert hyperlinks i can have images i can have audio i think there's limited embed codes 
But the one thing that really works great, there's also commenting built in. So just the same way that in Google Docs you would add comments, you can carry on. You know, I'll leave my myself a note. So I'll leave myself a note, um, add this in later. Or if I'm working on this with a colleague, I can, you know, leave a comment in saying, you know, Dan, can you check this out? So if you're working on a slide deck with colleagues and you're collaborating on this, this might be a way to set up some organizational structure. So I use a lot of comments in that regard. Uh, the comments are visible to other people that are in there and working on it. Um, so you can leave a, a post-it note almost for your colleagues. So back to the insert, there's text box, there's images, there's charts. One of the other things that I love a lot about Google Slides is it works well with YouTube. So the complaint that I had about Google Docs that it didn't play well with YouTube and embeds, that's not true for this. So we'll look for funny baby videos, which is a big thing in my house right now. So I can click on a video and hit select and it will embed the video right in my slide deck. So typically if I want to, I can add a title. I will change this slide to blank. So there's nothing on the slide now. And what I'll do is I'll maximize this. What I can do is center it. So as I'm moving the content around, you can see it's dropping lines in to show me how, uh, if it's centered, if it's aligned correctly. What I can also do is I'm on the Mac, so I'm hitting control click, but I can right click on a PC and I can change the background. So I can go in, I can add an image, so I can upload an image to be the background for the whole slide. I can also change the color. So for this, I'm gonna change that background to black so that I see the video and then it loads on it. So if I click on this, it's gonna pull up the video, it plays the video here, right on my slide deck. So that's very helpful for me if I have videos on YouTube, you know, just like this video here, I wanna share it out, I can embed it in the slide deck. Sometimes in classes where I wanna show, uh, you know, evidence or show something from YouTube, I'll pull that in and it's a way to quickly get to my YouTube video, play the video and then get out and go back to my presentation. So a powerful tool in my classroom. So I love the way that YouTube works well and seamlessly with Google Slides. So if I want to, another tool that I use a lot in here is I'll make slide duplicates. So if I have a, I, I typically like to have a beginning and end slide that are uh, the same so that people can get my contact info, they can get the name of the, the, the presentation. So I will duplicate the slide and then just drag it down to the end. So I can duplicate slides, I can drag them to the end. I also have the opportunity to change the layouts and themes and stuff like that. So there's a lot of power built in across it. Um, taking, our, taking a look at the rest of this stuff here. So I can modify different things here. I can check spelling. I don't really use a lot of these up to this point, um, but for the most part, that's how I use Google Slides. I will change the backgrounds on the slide deck. I will change the layout of the slide deck and the themes. I don't really add a lot of transitions to my slides. Um, I know that there are people out there that love transitions between slides. Um, I don't really use them that often just because I feel like it takes away from my overall content. So once again, I'll get into slides. I'll add a, tra I'll add a theme. I'll start editing once I'm happy with it. For the most part, I'll go in and I knew I, I know that I did this at the beginning of the video. I'll publish it to the web. If I need to uh, bring in collaborators as we're working on this, I can go up to share. Once again, I can add email addresses. I typically, once I get to this dialog box, I skip it and I go to advanced. This is the link to share everything out. I can go in and I can change the privacy levels. I've covered this in the past, but I might as well talk about it again. So the privacy levels, if I click on anyone with the link, that means they have to have specific access to this, meaning I invited them via email, or they have to know this URL. So if they can, if someone is 
randomly typing out URLs online one day, they could conceivably find this slide deck. Um, I only do that, I select on anyone with the link if I'm editing this with someone else, and I don't, or I'm not, I don't have their Google account, or I'm not sure about it, or if they may use a different one. If it's somebody I write with and work with regularly, I know the Google account that they most uh, use. But if it's somebody new that I'm working with, then I'll do anyone with the link and just send them the link over in their Gmail. Um, what I can also do is when I go out for the presentation, let's say I'm going to give a keynote either online or face to face. I can click on public with the web, uh, public on the web and give them the opportunity to comment. And this is typically the way that I send out the link for a public presentation. So I'll hit save. And now this link here, I will copy this and send this out to people to view. The challenge is with this, they're seeing the full slide deck and they're seeing all of the materials there. What I will also do sometimes is I'll go into that file published to the web and grab this link here. So if I grab that link, so if I give them this link, it's the behind the scenes view. In a lot of my work, I talk about not only my content or the, the point or the theme of my talk, but I also talk about how I'm doing this work. So I am, uh, you know, transparent and these are the tools that I'm using and how I use them. If I don't really want to focus on that, what I might do is just share out the other link, the published view link. And all it does is it shares the slide deck like this. So this is nice. People can go in, they can, you know, click through my slides. They can see what I have to share. Um, it's somewhat limited in what it will avail. It will let the viewer do. So depending on your purposes, you might want to share the full link and access, or you might want to share, um, you know, just that published version. Uh, depends on your purpose. For me, I share most everything that I create online because I want people to figure out how to do it. Um, the last thing I want to say about Google Slides is when I do share materials out online, I will typically share them and I'll say, okay, anyone on the internet can find and comment. So I'll share it this way. Public on the web can comment and I'll grab this link. And what I'll do is before I go give the talk, either the night before or the morning before the, the morning before the talk, I'll tweet out and I'll share out the link to the slide deck. So this slide deck will come up. And in the past, what I've had ha have had happen is I remember I was going to do a presentation in Rhode Island at, at the Digital Literacy Conference and shared out the materials that morning. And throughout the morning, I would get tweets and responses back saying, hey, that looks really interesting, like good luck on your talk. Uh, and then one of the things that was interesting to me is a colleague of mine, a friend of mine from Germany, sent me a, a, a private message in Twitter saying, hey, good luck. It looks like an interesting talk. Oh, by the way, you've got a spelling error on slide three. So quickly before I stood up in front of a couple hundred people, on my phone, I edited the slide to make sure there was no spelling error. So I was very thankful that I was working openly. Uh, so once again, Google Slides, all of these materials are shared, uh, are saved off in your Google Drive so you can go get back to them at a later date. Um, but that's Google Slides. Love it. I think it's a great tool. Uh, it provides me a number of resources. I love it because it allows me to get in, create materials, share them out with others, get feedback update materials without having to go back and download and delete other things. So if this sort of material interests you, if this sort of material benefits you, by all means, check out my website at wioburn.com. I dig in more deeply to some of the content that I'm sharing, and I share a lot of my other research and work and thoughts. Um, but, I, but also uh, sign up for my newsletter, TLDR. It's all about education, technology, literacy. It's all about stuff just like this and then some. So by all means, go in, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, because then you can keep track of future videos, but also some of the other things that have had me interested throughout the week. Once again, that's all Google Slides, and hopefully you'll love it as much as I do.